Welcome back to Autism Live. I am so excited about our next interview because I know how many of you are out there who love trains and transit and there is no more uh, exciting transit system than the New York transit system. And joining us right now on the phone are Jennifer Coulter and Sarah Thompson from the New York Transit Museum. Now, these two ladies, I, like I could spend the next hour giving you their credentials. Let me just give you a couple of highlights here. So uh, Jennifer Coulter is the Assistant Deputy Director for Education and Public Programs at the New York Transit Museum. She has spent over 20 years working in museum education for places that you would recognize like the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Brooklyn Museum, the Museum of Biblical Art, the Jewish Museum, the American Folk Art Museum, I mean, for heaven's sake, right? Um, but uh, she was also the director of education at Please Touch Museum. How much do we love that name? Where she focused on aligning education in initiatives to a new strategic plan. And we're really excited that now she's at the New York Transit Museum. Now, Sarah, Sarah is the Special Education and Access Coordinator at the New York Transit Museum, and she manages all of the access programs for children and adults and oversees the accessibility of the museum, and she has been working in this field for quite a long time and comes uh, to this through an education background, including working for nine years at a school for children with multiple disabilities. Um, she is a current steering committee member of the Museum Arts and Culture Access Consortium, and she has an MA in Museum Studies from Johns Hopkins University and a BA in History from Clemson. And my goodness, I didn't even say that uh, Jennifer has an MA in Art History from Hunter College um, and from the City uh, University of New York. Uh, my goodness, there couldn't be two more qualified people to be with us and talk about museums and education. How excited are we? So ladies, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. You. We're happy to be here. We're thrilled that you're here. And we just wanted to say, you know, we originally we were going to try and have them on via Skype, but, you know, their museum is underground. So... <laughs> We, we wanted to make sure that you guys could hear them, and that's why we went to the phone. But throughout, we're going to be showing you pictures that are from the museum. But ladies, could one or both of you give us a little bit of an introduction to what the New York Transit Museum is, where it is, and how we can access it? Sure. Um, thank you for that introduction. We're glad to be talking with you today. Um, for folks that might not have been to the Transit Museum before, uh, the New York Transit Museum is one of the city's leading cultural institutions, and it's the largest museum in the U.S. devoted to urban public transportation. Um, as you mentioned, we are housed in a 1936 decommissioned subway station. We're in downtown Brooklyn, New York. Uh, and the museum has really long been a magnet for youth on the autism spectrum who enthusiastically embrace our transit content. And, and how. I mean, to the point where there have been movies made about this, documentary and other, about how much individuals on the spectrum love the New York transit system. Um, and how could you not? It is amazing. And it always boggles my mind that... It, it was started at, at, a, at a point in time when I can't even imagine how they thought they could do that. It, it really is, I think, one, one of the wonders of the world. So, um, so we know now that it's in Brooklyn. Uh, how often are you open? Is it a, a seven days a week? Like what's, and, and where can we find more information? Sure. So we, we're open six days a week. Uh, we're closed on Mondays. We open during the week at 10 o'clock in the morning and close at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And then the weekends, we open at 11 a.m. and close at 5. And we have a host of programming both during the week and on the weekend for our visitors. Uh, we like to program around our vintage trains that are on our lower platform level in the museum. And we also have an upper level of the museum, a uh, mezzanine level, that has rotating temporary exhibitions, and there's a lot of interesting content there as well for people to come back and visit again and again and see something new. And, and I know you can't feel it uh, on the phone, but we're all salivating. 
because uh, we all know somebody in our lives who this would be a really amazing place to go and visit. So um, you also are, because of the background that both of you have, have amazing programs that make sure that people of all abilities uh, are able to access the museum. Uh, you're very committed to neuro neurodiversity, and I know that our audience is, is thrilled to hear that. You have very specific programs. So why don't we start to talk through some of the different programs that you have available, the first one being Subway Sleuths. Who wants to tell us about that? Uh, I will. I'm Sarah. Hello. Hello. Um, yes. Yeah. So Subway Sleuths, which has been um, in, in existence at the museum since uh, about 2010, um, like you said, using that love and passion for transit to motivate our youth um, on the autism spectrum to practice navigating some social situations with their peers that maybe they otherwise would not be as comfortable doing, but because they're so excited to be in our museum and talking about something that they love is really what the program is based on and making it a very unique museum program. And so for Subway Sleuths, every session is facilitated by a special educator, a speech language pathologist, and of course a museum educator, so that we are really focusing on accomplishing some of those communication and social skill goals. And we actually have a video of Subway Sleuths, and when we come back from that, we're going to show you that, then we're going to talk about some of the other programs that are available, but take a look at Subway Sleuths. The Transit Museum is extremely honored and excited to be receiving the National Arts and Humanities Youth Program Award, which is given by the President's Committee on the Arts and the Humanities. This is the highest award in the nation for out-of-school programs, and we are so honored that Subway Sluice is receiving this award. Subway Sluice is an out-of-school program offered by the Transit Museum for children on the autism spectrum, and it's for children who are train enthusiasts. So these are students, young people who love love the subway, love buses, they know the subway system backwards and forwards, and they love this museum. It's a program that is designed to help students with autism make social connections and build certain skills that are hard for children with autism. Oftentimes kids on the spectrum can, can have a difficult time relating to other people, but at Subway Sluice in the Transit Museum, when they're interacting with other people who are also these train enthusiasts, it provides such a natural opportunity for connections. He started speaking more to us. He started looking at us more when he was speaking to us. It was just a huge change, and the teachers at his school also noticed the same thing. They were, they were realizing that his communication was getting much better. The, the program has opened up Alistair, at least, in ways to express himself and to discuss things and have open communication and dialogue. He would literally dash down the stairs without hesitation, knowing that it was a place where he belonged. And I think that is a really important feeling for children like Philip. One moment that I heard from a parent recently was that her child now has a best friend in school and he has never had a best friend before. And so this was a big moment that she attributed to Subway Sluice because he learned to make those connections with other kids and talk to other children. And so now in school, he had a best friend. My, my favorite part is when I go on the bus awesome. and I pretend to drive it. I, it was so fun. My favorite game is Hold the Pole because um, I, because I like how the rules go, and I think it's a fair game. My favorite train line is the G3 because it roars through Christopher Street, Sheridan Square. What gets to happen at Subway Sleuths is our kids get to be in a supportive environment with people that know about autism and know what accommodations they might need, but at the same time, they just get to explore. They just get to be kids. They get to do something that they're interested in. This is their after-school program. And the moment that that dawned on me, I thought this is a phenomenal program for kids on the spectrum. They don't have access to anything else like this. So am I done? 
the New York Transit Museum. It is a th I just have been waxing poetic about how much I have to get there with my son and my husband. Uh, but we are still on the phone with Jennifer Coulter, the Assistant Deputy Director for Education and Public Programs for the New York Transit Museum, and Sarah Thompson, who is the Special Education and Access Coordinator at the New York Transit Museum. And ladies, so Subway Sleuth, super awesome, but that's not the only program that you have. Talk to us a little bit about Transit Quest. So Transit Quest is a program that is, has now just completed its second year. It is the product of some conversations that we've had about the, the real success of Subway Sleuths and really wanting to expand our programming based on that same model and the same philosophy of a strengths-based approach, but for older kids. So the Sleuths program is for kids in elementary school, and Transit Quest is for high school age students, for teenagers. So it's um, a program that occurs in the summer. So while Subway Sleuths is a school year program, it takes place once a week after school for 10 weeks. Transit Quest for the high school kids is uh, based on the same model, but it happens over one intensive week in the summer. And we've intentionally selected a week in August towards the end of the month, right before kids are going back to school. And the reason for that is that for a lot of kids, when they're on summer break, there's the summer slide. And for many students, it can be really a slide in terms of academic skills. But when we're thinking about our neurodiverse audience, sometimes there can also be a, a summer slide around some of the social skills that we work on in these programs. And so we've offered this Transit Quest program for our teens really at the end of the summer to help them prepare to go back to school around some of those social issues. Yeah. So they're, they're playing games, they're communicating with their peers about their love of trains, they're going on field trips. We also leave the museum and we go out into the system on some really exciting field trips like the original City Hall station. We go to power stations or bus depots. And it's great because, you know, our, our teens and all of our visitors, really, that have this passion for our content can really be the experts in some situations as well as the staff. So it's really fun for us to see them be able to share all of that information that they have about our content with some of our colleagues in the MTA and with the museum staff and feel empowered about all of that information that they have. Wonderful. And then you have Special Day for Special Kids. Tell us about that. Yeah, Special Day for Special Kids. We host it three times a year in the museum. Uh, typically, we do it in the morning. We start an hour before we open to the public so that we can have more of that comfortable space for families who may not be as familiar with the museum and they have some time to get acquainted uh, with it. And then we've also done it um, in the evening as an after school event um, so that families have another option of when they can come visit us. And we do a lot of drop in activities during that, including an art making workshop and having musicians and maybe a scavenger hunt or one of our costume storytellers doing a show. And it's, you know, we just had one recently and it really um, shows what a welcoming space we are. When I was reviewing our surveys for that, just how families were talking about in those surveys, how comfortable and welcomed that they felt in our space, and thanks to our staff. Well, you guys have a, a bit of a history of welcoming uh, folks with diverse backgrounds and, and uh, the neurodiverse. This is not something that's new for you guys. You guys are really... Um, you, you've been a player in doing this for a while. Um, you, uh, I, I just have to commend you. This is so wonderful and so fabulous and refreshing. I understand that you also offer day hab day and tours for adults as well as students? Yeah, so for adults twice a year, we have an event called Day Habilitation Day. That's when we welcome adult groups from their day habilitation programs, organizations, to, um, to come visit us for a free afternoon. We'll go do some activities, with, some drop-in activities with them as well. And it's just a really pleasant way um, to spend time with our community. And, of course, um, a adult group could book a tour with us during the week and we would provide supports and resources that they would need with all of our um, groups with disabilities that 
book a tour with us and come visit us. I always reach out to them to try to learn more about the individuals who are going to be visiting us to make sure that we're providing the most supportive um, program for them and just how we can do our best to accommodate them as well as making them feel more comfortable with, with what is happening by sending out social narratives and things like that. And for folks who are visiting from out of town, you know, uh, that maybe don't have the opportunity to do the subway sleuth or the transit uh, quest, or even they're not there for the special uh, day for special kids, you have something really remarkable that you have sensory kits um, available when they visit to help them to be able to navigate the museum. Is that correct? That's right. Yes. So these are kits that an individual visitor could borrow from museum staff when they come in, they can ask for it. And in the sensory kits, we would have items like a weighted lap pad, fidgets, um, communication tools, uh, headphones, in case uh, it's a little loud in the museum. So these are kits that really help people navigate the space in a way that's comfortable for them. And one of my favorite things about this is that you have uh, spaces there where they can practice riding the train. So I, and, and work out social things. I mean, we talk on the show a lot about how um, rehearsal is the key to a lot of success with a lot of different things in life. And especially if you have a sensory kid who might be overwhelmed being on a train and there's the flashing lights and there's people and people get on and off and there's all these different new, uh, new and different noises. I love the fact that there is a space that they can go and they can rehearse and you call it being ready to ride. Um, I absolutely love um, that you guys have that available. And I love that they can. T you guys talk about the social etiquette nuances of the train, too. I wish you gave this to everybody. Do you give this to everybody? <laughs> well, it's funny because we were just talking about this yesterday, and um, we would love to make it available to all sorts of people. Um, we would love for it to be available to anyone who is, trying to navigate the New York City subway system. Uh, you know, when he first moved to New York, um, if you're not a native New Yorker, I was not a native New Yorker when I came here 20 years ago, and uh, and it's overwhelming. There's a lot to think about, and, um, and I think it's a really helpful program for anyone starting out in New York City and being comfortable with riding on their own. Well, what a wonderful museum you guys have, and we're uh, thrilled to feature you guys here. We want to encourage people, especially if you are within the New York area, um, you've got to get to this museum. Um, check out the programs, uh, go on their website, you know, plan your day ahead of time. It may be that the first time you go, you want to go for a special day for special kids, or maybe you can get your uh, child or teenager or adult signed up for a Subway Sleuths or Transit Quest, but um, definitely visit this museum. And so the website again is, and I'm asking you guys because I don't know. Our website is NY transitmuseum.org slash access. You want to check out the access program? Yes. Okay, we have lots of stuff on our list. Okay. This. Well, I, thank you. I appreciate you ladies for being here and thank you so much and hopefully I'll get to see you soon. Thank you so much. It was great talking with you and yes, please reach out if you're in New York. I will. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.